Um, hi all, uh, thank you for having me and thank you for making the time. Um, I am Valeria and I'm going to talk about uh, being the new kid on the block um, or a product manager survival guide. Um, so just a little bit of introduction. As I said, I'm Valeria, I'm Italian, I'm 29. I have actually a marketing background. So I studied marketing for at university for both bachelor and master. Uh, but then I kind of shift uh, and I am a product manager um, and I've been so for several tech companies in Germany in the past four years, uh, which means that I have been a new kid on the block a few times over the past few years. Um, and how I am um, describing being a new kid on the block, I found this description, which I thought it was quite nice. Um, and it's someone who is new in a place or organization and has many things to learn about it. Um, and I think the quote is also very fitting because realizing I was the new kid on the block in this job, I was determined to prove myself. And I think that this determination to prove yourself and um, having a lot of things to learn is something that um, it's very, very uh, common whenever you start a new position or uh, a new job, uh, but it's not everything that is there because I think also in my personal experience, there are few words that can be used um to describe you know like my first months or like how i feel during the first times at a new organization or in place um and you know it can be usually very positive so i had a very good experience overall um and that's why i have more you know like this energized first eager but you know it's always not always rainbow and sh sunshine uh so there is also these like confused overwhelmed uh, feelings and then you know like through a other bunch of words where you know maybe you will see yourself reflected um you know also the positive delighted amazed um maybe hopeful motivated uh but you know also tired anxious uh worried uh, um and you know like also the very negative of course hopefully not uh, but uh, it can happen then um as a new kid on the block uh you feel sometimes discouraged or disappointed and so on and so forth so um, I put together a few tips and tricks and things that I learned through my personal experience that hopefully can help um, make you feel more on the positive side rather than on the negative side. Um, and what I'm going to cover um, is in a few different steps. So um, I will start actually before starting it, um, because I think that if you have the chance to take some time and uh, do your homework in a way and understand, you know, what's the company about, the one that you want to join, um, as well as the industry, um, it usually makes it easier for you as well. And then uh, what actually happens once you uh, are starting and once you are the new kid on the block. Um, so 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, I'm pretty sure you saw uh, this approach in the past. Um, and, you know, like you can see as more uh, first start in the learning, uh, then contributing and then advancing. Uh, and, you know, of course, these uh, the next slides and uh, my opinions are mine only uh, and not necessarily reflecting uh, current or previous employers, uh, but I hope nevertheless are still helpful. Um, so getting into it uh, before starting the research part. So with research, I mean a few different things. And of course, you know, um, you, you are not necessarily expected to get all of the information I'm about to present, uh, but I think it's good when you have the chance for it, because it will give you a little bit of advantage before you actually start out of the blue. Um, so something that I think it might be nice to look into uh, before you start with a new company is in general how the industry is doing um, the one that your company operates, is it growing? There is a recession, is it emerging market? Because of course, um, the expectation and the trends uh, you will have will change as well as the company. Like is the company um, growing or is maybe the company um, very like a super new startup? Because of course, based on that um, size of the company, general trends, you will be expected to have like a little bit of different start. Um, of course, you know, you will know more when you actually start, uh, but it can give you a little bit of context. Also, how is actually the company you're going to work for? Um, like, is there something that you can find on Glassdoor, asking your network? Because, of course, you're going to start and you might have some expectation and, you know, hopefully everything will turn out well. But if there is something you need to be mindful of, 
uh, perhaps um, it's a good place to know before you start. Um, and something that I think is always very important, what's the business model of the company? Because then based on how is the company actually, you know, like having the value proposition, how would then you be able to contribute to this? Uh, and then, of course, because you're a product manager uh, or you want to be one, uh, you also would like to know a little bit more about the product if it's possible before. So how is the product actually? So what's the flow? Again, what's the value proposition? Um, also something important, uh, if you get the chance to know in advance, uh, how's the product culture? Like, um, are they um, spending a lot of time in discovery or is it more about quick validation, et cetera, et cetera? Um, as well as um, how is the team you're going to work with? Um, sometimes you have the chance uh, in their interview steps to know some of the people that you might work with. Uh, and I think it's always nice because you get a uh, first, at least gut feeling of um, how is your team going to be. Then in the third days, the learning period, um, I divided it into four uh, weeks. And of course, you know, like these are the main building blocks, I would say, but it's not because um, something is highlighted in week one, they will end uh, after the first week. It's going to be like an overall ongoing process. Um, so in the first week, uh, if you didn't have the chance to, you know, complete all of your research part we just talked about, it will be a nice place to start because then you get the answers that might be relevant for you. And then um, it's about get to know things. Um, I Overall, the whole month, but especially the first week, um, I think very first, get to know your team, because these will be the people you work with on a daily basis. And so it's very important that you dedicate uh, the first time to do so. Um, also, get to know your team value proposition. So again, we talked about um, what's the company value proposition, what's the business model, how is your team fitting in, what's the mission and the vision, and so on. Um, and also, very important, uh, I found out, uh, and it often gets um, overseen, uh, get accesses. Of course, you won't be able to get all the accesses during the first week, but it's always something that I get personally annoyed because it's a lot of bureaucracy, uh, and it's nice when you have the chance to do so, like in the first week, so you don't have to think about it anymore. In the second week, uh, I think it's nice to start to get to know your stakeholder because, of course, uh, you'll probably not work in isolation and you will be people that will need information from you. So, like, how do you work with them um, and what's their expectation for your role and your team and so on? Uh, and then uh, get to know your product. You will start here and you will continue overall. Uh, of course, if you get the chance starting with one already. Uh, but what's the user problem that you're uh, tackling uh, with the product that you're working on? Uh, who are the current users? What's the current solution? Um, what are the competitors doing? And what's the general performance you're having? Um, and this is very important to understand. It's quite um, high level, I would say, but it's what you want to know at the beginning. And then, you know, while the week uh, proceeds, of course, you want to know uh, a little bit more things in depth. So, of course, you know, like the product will always be the focus area, but it can be a little bit more into the vision and the roadmap, uh, as well as the backlog and key processes. Uh, and I think also something important is get to know your company product processes, especially if it's something uh, of a little bit more structured company or a little bit more big. There is usually um, some processes in place for uh, team collaboration where there might be some cross planning. Is that something that you need to account for and get familiar with? And then, of course, you know, week four, uh, again, product uh, more in the nitty gritty. So if there is any repository, if there is some monitoring dashboard, if there is non bugs, like get to know them because, of course, um, you have to, uh, like, as soon as you progress, you have to learn more details. Um, as well as, you know, like backlog and key processes are continuing from last week because um, depending on your seniority as product manager, but uh, you might need to be very familiar with the backlog and how things uh, are getting moved. Uh, so just be sure that you dedicate the time. And then, you know, of course, end of week four, uh, I think it's very important when you get the chance to retrospect and see how you did in your first month. Um, so these will be my general um, uh, main activities for the first month. And some tips and tricks uh, in the learning area. Uh, I would say it's generally nice and recommended to keep it high level because, of course, you know, you want to know more and more, but uh, you also don't want to go down rabbit holes, uh, especially if there is some documentation. It might be that 
you know, like, of course, it gets um, outdated uh, and you don't want to spend too much time on things that maybe are not relevant anymore. So just be mindful of this. Um, also trying to understand and do not try to change things yet. So I really think it's important where, uh, especially in the first month, you really try to get an understanding of why things are in a certain way, uh, but try to keep yourself from suggesting things too much. Of course, here it depends on the culture of the company, of the team, but it's usually better to really try to see uh, why certain things are in place. Get to know people. Uh, so product manager, I think it's a team sport. Uh, so you're not supposed to do your job in isolation. Um, and it's good to know who are you working with. And I call the good, the bad and the ugly in a way that, of course, uh, we always work with like uh, many, many people. They're usually uh, very nice, uh, especially in my experience. But there is always going to be um, some maybe team members or stakeholders that um, have different communication style from you or have different views or different priorities. And so you want to be sure that you understand where other people are coming from and how you can uh, make the best out of it and the most out of it. Make other people explain things to you. This kind of goes hand in hand of getting to know people and getting to know things. Because um, I think it's important when you're also trying to understand how different people in your team and uh, stakeholders and so on are viewing the things that you're about to work on. Because then you can understand not only like the hard facts, but also some of the personal opinions. And it will make you understand things better. Plus, I think that, you know, um, it's the first month, so everybody is expecting you to um, actually learn and um, have a lot of questions and ask time uh, out of people's calendar. Uh, so make use of it, because this is where you can and you uh, have to take the chance. Um, I think also something that um, you should always consider is know how you learn the best and go for that because um, I feel a lot of times in articles or podcasts or so on, there's always the tendency of um, asking product managers to not dedicate too much time at their desk uh, or, you know, mainly talk to people and so on and so forth. And I think these are all valid points uh, and they're usually best practices. But if you know that, for example, um, you need to take some time to you know like digest the information that you have and spend time by yourself um try to do that too and like trying to understand how you make the most out of these 30 days um plus uh, like be sure that you really understand what's going on so if for example you need to uh, go more into the uh, dashboard go for that as well as maybe ask someone to draw things on a whiteboard um, so just be sure that you do what's best for you as well uh, set expectation, very important uh, for yourself, uh, but also like try to see what other people uh, have expected from you, especially your lead, because then you can see how is your performance and how are things proceeding uh, over the next months. Uh, prepare an intro because, of course, you know, you're going to introduce yourself a lot. And I think uh, it happens sometimes where you get bored uh, out of your mind of introducing yourself. So just be sure that uh, you have an intro that at least makes you feel comfortable. Smile, very important because, of course, you know, um, there is a first impression that you want to set. Uh, and, um, you know, you don't have to smile all the time, but like just to be sure that you come out as friendly and approachable, especially in the first month, because this is uh, what you would like to have from yourself because you want to approach other people. And I think it's nice when other people perceive you as approachable, especially at first. Be humble, sit down uh, in a way that, of course, you know, it goes hand in hand of trying to understand and not trying to change. Uh, but also you will, uh, most of the time, I feel, uh, feel like the most stupid person in the room during the first 30 months. Take advantage of that because um, you're not expected to know anything. You are there to learn, um, especially, you know, like out of the nitty gritty parts. Um, so be able to, um, you know, leveraging this uh, stupidness and humbleness. I think it's good, um, especially because you can continue asking, asking, asking. And in my personal view, too many questions is the right amount. Be sure that you really understand where you are. Then 60 days, um, contribute time. Um, so again, and this kind of four weeks uh, breakdown, 
Um, I think, of course, you know, like there is never like a, a sharp cut where, oh, in the first month you learn everything that there was to learn and then the, uh, sorry, in the 30 days um, you did everything and then in the 60 days you start contributing from first minute. There is always a bit of adjustment. Um, so, of course, you know, if you didn't have the chance to um, complete everything you needed, uh, continue to get to know your product and be at the point where you feel comfortable about but also uh, we'd start contributing, I think starting with maybe a backlog item, um, it's a good start. Of course, you know, you're usually not expected to write all the user stories. Yeah, again, depend on the team and the company. Uh, but I think that starting with something that you can um, submit to your team and like get some feedback, I think it's a very good start. Um, also, I think it's important when you start establishing a team relationship. So of course, you know, it's not going to be completed at the end of week one, but um, how would you like to have um, a relationship with your team? And how is your team expecting to have a relationship with you? So um, is that maybe like one on one time? Um, is that something that would maybe with a formal agenda? How would you like to work with them and vice versa? So you can make the most out of this. Same um, for stakeholder relationship. I think usually like with the stakeholders that might be a little bit more formal uh, than with your team, because of course, you know, like you don't necessarily see them every day. Uh, but try to see how you can make the most out of both of your time. Um, and is that like an expectation that uh, they will interact with also the team more uh, or mainly with you? So like just try to set uh, rules that work for both parties. Um, as I mentioned, I don't think the learning stops at 30 days. So for me, um, within the second month, also understanding the company big project starts being important because of course, you know, within the 30 days, um, you started uh, focusing very much so on your team, uh, but it's also important to know what's going on. And so especially if you started at the beginning of the year or at the start of the new quarter, there's always usually something going on across company. Uh, is there something you need to be aware of and maybe you can contribute in some way um, further down the line? Um, also, something that I think it's good to start thinking about is understanding what could be changed and how. Not necessarily start changing it, but out of everything that you learn in the first month, um, what is that you see some potential for improvement and how can you actually make a contribution to it? Um, in week three, I think it's nice when you start to have a little bit of routine. I know it's hard uh, for product managers to have uh, actual routine, but maybe block your calendars and uh, dedicate some time to things that you would like to do and dedicate time for, uh, because I think it starts bringing some structure into the chaos uh, and make you also more productive and organized. Um, I think it's also important to start getting your hands dirty uh, because, of course, you know, as, again, as a product manager, you're not supposed to do all the tasks or do all the work. But um, I think it's good when we also get the chance to do um, something small or, you know, even if um, you cannot do any of the tasks, but improve documentation, start um, doing something that contributes to the team and um, ideally also kind of applies what you learn so far because then you get the chance to really have a sense of what's going on and um, what's the team dealing with. I think also another uh, part of the relationship which I think is important to um, uh, keep in mind um, is the one with other teams and product managers because again you don't usually work in isolation also as a team uh, there might be a lot of dependencies from other teams in the company and so how can you make the most out of that and how do you work with them and so on. Um, and I think in week four is usually a good time to um, use um, what you had in week two, so understand what could be changed and actually start suggesting improvements and small changes. It can be anything. It can be, you know, like new quarterly goals, planning processes, features. So whatever you think fits best uh, in your current situation and try to gather what are the team members or the people you work with think, because uh, there might be times where um, some teams are very, you know, um, open to change. Some other times, for any reason, there might be some more resistance. Um, and like, just to understand um, what matters to you and like, how can you continue making improvement without um, having a lot of resistance or getting the buy-in that you need to actually move and understand why maybe um, some changes are not flying as well as you thought. 
And then, of course, again, retrospect for me always very important because um, at the end of the 60 days, um, how much have you contributed? Um, is the learning a little bit better? Um, are you happy with what you put out? Or is there some blockers that maybe occurred? Um, how do you move forward with that? So I think it's always important when you get the chance to think about what happened and how do you move forward again? And again, some tips and tricks uh, for six days. Um, ask for help and feedback. Uh, so of course, you're still a new kid and you shouldn't be alone. So if there is something you're stuck with or you don't understand or you want feedback about, like, for example, one of the tasks that you worked on or how you're approaching your work, uh, do it. Because I think it's also important where, um, again, making yourself approachable, um, make the most out of your experience because people will be um, willing and will um, see um, how that uh, will see the fact that you're open for feedback and then they will be willing to give you more. Aim for quick wins. So, of course, you know, like the team is contribute, but you're not expected, I think, to change something drastically in the first six days. Of course, you know, it depends. That's why you set expectation in uh, month one. Uh, but you want to see that, you know, like whatever you contribute is something that can be done quickly and can be seen quickly and potentially fixed or iterated. Um, so I think, you know, quick analysis, small bug fixes, small feature releases, monitoring processes, um, anything that can can help you out and also build a little bit of confidence from your side as well. Um, however, don't be afraid of failure because, of course, you know, uh, we say in Italy, who works makes mistakes. So um, it never, it doesn't matter how small uh, the quick win will be, there is always going to be something that will go wrong. Uh, so just, you know, like try to accept that and learn from them and move forward. Um, of course, uh, you know, like as I mentioned a few times, um, even though you want to aim for the quick win, you also want to start understanding where you can actually move the needle because, um, of course, you know, like, again, you're not supposed to probably fix everything in the second month, uh, but you want to be sure that moving forward, you know, like, what are the big KPIs that you can um, improve and um, how can you make your contribution better? I think it's also good to organize yourself during the first, uh, the, during the second month, because I think, you know, while you have the time to consolidate the learning and find the rhythm, you have a better chance to actually contribute and uh, find your flow. Uh, never stop building relationship. Of course, you know, like this was very important and I, I highlighted it a few times, uh, but it's not going to stop here and it's never going to stop. Um, so you need people to start trusting you more and more as you become more independent. You want that buy-in we talked about. Keep smiling, of course, always important. Um, so, you know, um, potentially you already had your first impression during the first month, but I think keeping a positive attitude is quite important again during the second month, because especially when there are going to be failures uh, when you start trying to contribute, uh, um, you know, like it's not the end of the world, hopefully. So, you know, like just um, keep smiling and keep having a positive attitude and breathe because I think these two things go hand in hand where, you know, sometimes there is a major problem and you need to fix it and, you know, like just continue breathing and, uh, you know, keep yourself centered. 90 and plus days advanced. So, of course, you know, um, it doesn't really stop there, like the onboarding, it's like just the bulk of it. Uh, but there is always going to be uh, things to learn, things to improve and contribute. Uh, but just in general, I think um, what I tried to highlight in these uh, four weeks of the 90 plus days um, is to start getting into a rhythm where um, you get your product uh, tasks in a way uh, done um, or accounted for. Um, of course, you know, not necessarily you will cover them in the third month, or maybe you covered it before. Again, depends a little bit on uh, the company and the team and the expectation on your role. But it should be um, kind of structured this way, um, in my experience, where, you know, you really now have a good sense of the knowledge that you should have gained. Um, and, you know, it's now becoming quite obvious to see, okay, what are, you know, the user problem or the business initiative, the business need, et cetera, that you need to uh, tackle to really make a difference. Um, so what is the most important and the one you want to tackle first or either or it doesn't necessarily always need to be the same. 
Um, but it's very important that you start to plan this new initiative, get the buy-in, very important. How do you move the needle? How do you convince people that this thing should be uh, worked on? Or the other way around, when like maybe people have good feedback on why you shouldn't work on it. Uh, and maybe you can you know, go back to the drawing board and see uh, why maybe some of the knowledge that you had um, was not the case. Um, and then, of course, work on the new initiative. So start having developer, assume that you got the buy-in, uh, but also don't forget personal development, because I think um, in the expectation that you set for yourself in the first month, um, how are you with that? And like, is there maybe something that you learn within these uh, three months uh, that you need to focus more on or you need to develop further? So how do you balance that? And then, uh, of course, uh, week four and uh, plus, um, deliver the new initiative, measure the performance, iterate, and again, you're in product. So uh, this might look very familiar to you. Uh, and then again, retrospect, because again, three months passed and how did they go? And is there anything that you can learn from that moving forward? Because um, it's going to be more and more of these kind of things. However, uh, never stop learning and building relationship because these are very two important aspects, in my opinion, of the product manager role. So even though um, it becomes maybe less of a frequent thing and more of a routine task, but it's always important to keep uh, fresh and keep in mind. So in the advanced tips and tricks, uh, I think it's okay if you're still not the expert within the 90 days. Again, of course, depends on the expectation that also other people set from you uh, at the beginning, but um, it's not usually the end of the world. So like the team is there for you, other people are there for you. So if there is any other questions that are left, keep asking because um, there is always something new that comes out out of nowhere uh, or like if not always quite often. Um, so it's fine. Like just try to always build on this knowledge. And again, like as a segue, um, always expand. So there is more things to learn, uh, more people to meet, a relationship to be, you know, like um, nurtured, um, more experience, skills. So never stop developing yourself because uh, it will come in handy to you, to your team, to the work you're doing. Um, so of course, you know, um, you have to kind of balance, uh, but always try to have this in mind. Every day is a new day. So, of course, there is only one first impression. You probably had it during the first 30 days or at least during these first three months. Uh, but there is also, I think, always a chance to make it better. So even if maybe like a, um, a relationship started out a little bit rocky uh, or there was like some big mistakes in the task you made, um, I think there is always some wiggle room to actually make it better. That's why I put re retrospect as a point in like all of these three months, because there is always things that we're not happy about and we would like to improve. Don't be discouraged about uh, like uh, think about it, understand why you're not happy about it and move forward and always also ask for feedback. So if someone was not happy with um, something you did, trying to understand why that's the case and try to improve about it. Um, and here is again a segue, ask for formal feedback. Uh, I think that, you know, like ask for feedback was always in the previous month, uh, but I think a little bit more formal and based on the expectation that you set in the beginning will really help you to understand where are you lacking? Is there something that you can improve? And you know, come with an open mind. Of course, uh, um, the ego and the feelings are always going to be hurt, especially I think at the beginning, um, but forget about it and like try to really make the best out of your experience. Celebrate because I think, you know, like you survived 90 days as product manager is not, um, you know, it's not a small task, I think, and it's time to really, you know, pat yourself on the back and nevertheless be happy about it, um, especially because product management is an endurance sport. There is always something coming up. There is always a bug to fix. There is always uh, a new request. So I think that taking the time to um, celebrate the small wins, it's really important and you should never forget it, uh, especially moving forward. And uh, I think uh, never stop being the new kid on the block. I think um, all of the points that um, I highlighted before, tips and tricks, um, I think they always come in handy, even though you've been there for a while 
um, you know, keeping a positive attitude, uh, keep being curious, asking questions, um, um, challenge yourself uh, um, are things that you do a lot when you start. Uh, um, and at a certain point, maybe you get comfortable, comfortable and you stop doing. I think always reminding yourself that these are important qualities, especially in product, um, help you out because it puts you in a good mindset. Closing notes, um, these are like very general tips and tricks, uh, disclaimers on everything I've said so far. Um, so to each their own. So of course, you know, everything that I highlighted here are just some of the best practices, not silver bullets. So this is what worked for me and this is what I learned in my experience. But um, every single one of us um, in product or wanting to come into product um, are probably having different experiences. So just try to see what makes sense for you and take the time to learn from yourself because I think it's always important. Um, and always ask questions to your network, uh, um, have some other product managers you can relate to and ask them for advice. Um, so trying to understand what really makes sense for you. Um, also, it depends on like, so everything that I said kind of depends on how new are you as a new kid. So is that your first uh, product manager uh, job or is it like a completely new industry? Uh, is it a tech stack you've never seen before? Business models that are completely new. Um, so depending on that, of course, more time should be accounted for in the learning because you will not just need to be the new kid on the block, but you will need to learn a lot more of what's going on. Also. Uh, kind of goes together, but how complex is your product and role? Like, is it going to be like a junior role or is it going to be maybe a more senior role, but for a completely new position that wasn't existing before you joining? Um, so it kind of depends. And 90 days, of course, is a good number of days, but it's not always realistic to achieve everything. Or maybe on the other hand, is a lot for the company and the team you're working with. Um, so expectation is really important again. Um, and last but not least, uh, keep perspective and have fun because, of course, you know, like, uh, as I mentioned at first, uh, the first three months tend to be quite stressful and quite intense, even though uh, everything goes well. So, you know, like, try to keep a light, um, um, a light perspective on things, especially for yourself. Don't take your yourself too seriously um, and try to enjoy the time you're having. So I think that's all. Um, thank you a lot for having me um, and have a good time. <laughs>